How do you feel about the state of the country? Well, I think it's great that people are, are willing to, to protest at obvious injustice. I am pretty pessimistic about the future of democracy and freedom. And hope to tread lightly lest my tolerant conversation be met with intolerance from my own political camp, which may cancel the rest of my life. So I feel that perhaps the single biggest problem in America right now is something that in the last five decades the right wing went to war against and rightfully lost but that today the left wing increasingly is weaponizing against as well. And that is the notion that your feelings do not determine the intrinsic truth of a matter. Now that's obvious. I think this guy's a jerk. Doesn't make it so. I think this guy's awesome. Doesn't make it so. Decades ago or much more recently, okay? Right wingers. And I'm sorry, not all right wingers, but right wingers. That is less of a human being because of the color of their skin. Left and right wingers. That person is essentially a second class citizen because she's a woman. Okay. Their opinions, their feelings did not make those things true. So democracy, a society that becomes increasingly free and rightfully tolerant understands that and is able to allow people if they are both sides are of good faith to come to a table and have what's called a mature conversation that is no longer allowed because essentially we have all become the children of Gordon Gecko, Tony Montana, and Fox News. So Gordon Gecko was a cautionary tale. Tony Montana, or the original, the original Scarface, Tony Camonte, was a cautionary tale. The original Scarface was a 1932 motion picture by Howard Hawks about Italian gangsters in Chicago. Go figure. It's about an Italian gangster in Chicago called Scarface. Who do you think it was about? Okay, it was about Al Capone. Okay, so all you jerks who have a problem with Michael B. Jordan cast as Scarface because he's not Hispanic, the role was originally Italian. Okay. Both bo both cases, okay, you have Gordon Gecko representing the white establishment. Okay. You have Tony Montana representing the avenues that minorities perhaps see as a viable option <clears throat> because of oppression or not having access to things that 
the crowd at large has access to pursuing the, the, the life path of Gordon Gecko. Okay. But even white folks looked at Gordon Gecko as an asshole. This is someone who is on Wall Street manipulating the system, even, even uh, some legalities in the system and illegal aspects of the system to sort of fleece the, 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 not just the working man, but the average man through uber capitalism, not just capitalism, the, the ultra manipulative, exploitive uh, extreme of capitalism. Then you have Tony Montana, the opposite. Okay. Exploiting the common people as well. Through, through vice, through violence. And what happened was by now, those aren't cautionary tales. That's the game. And in a free society where people can choose, <clears throat> the choice, the majority has clearly spoken. People will choose to be ultra consumeristic. Whatever side of the spectrum you're on, you're on, whether it's white collar and allegedly white, whether it's gangster and allegedly not white. Okay. The people have spoken. It's been decades now since Reagan politics, the Reagan era, and people are going to choose products and commodities and wealth. However, you manage to get it as opposed to having that much of altruism to learn about things. You need to take time to learn. You and I, we go to the movies and people aren't paying attention. They want to know what happened on the screen without surrendering to the happening, to have an experience and to surrender to the authorial tone and use of time unfolding in a movie. But most people will, 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 will take that, that, that two hours and the amount of money they spent and not actually want to surrender to it. Well, whether it's a movie, whether it's a relationship, whether it's understanding history and therefore understanding the times you're in now, that necessitates having that much altruism in your psychology and your ego to surrender yourself and your time to be all ears, to pay attention and to process that. But if you have a piece of technology in your pocket that is eating up time throughout your day, with memes, photos, videos of things that by and large don't really matter as we do this IGTV that we hope you pay attention to on your phone. <laughs> Literally, your, your neurology, okay, changes your ability to look at a situation and have the maturity to experience it, process it, reference it with a network of previous experiences that you hopefully process throughout the maturity of your life. That is something that particularly post turn of the 21st century, Americans are less and less able to do. And an outlet like Fox news, which came to power and dominance through the Clinton impeachment aids and abets that, that that's, that's their, that's their bread and butter where they're not following journalistic practices and people don't even understand journalism. Journalism is supposed to use all the avenues accessible, hopefully legal to provide you with a network of information by which you can then dissect through the exact processes I just suggested, adults in 
an adult society have to do to process life. But people stopped wanting that. They want to consume. They want reaffirmations of what they already believe. So we get to a point where someone like Barack Obama, okay, if 50% to 60% of Americans believe in everything on his platform, if you don't believe it, if you're a right winger, I'm not suggesting that you just roll over. I believe in democracy, which means inclusion. Okay, but the notion that he is a pariah because he doesn't reaffirm what you already believe when 50 to 60 percent of the American people believe in everything that he says and does is absurd. Likewise, today, if you're a left winger who sees a a George H.W. Bush as a pariah, I'm a left winger. And I'm not going to just roll over and, and, and support his platform, but he is a normal person that has a place at the table. And I'm going to do what I can as an activist to present our side and allow all of us as free people in a democracy to vote. And hopefully the results are a reflection of the American people. But we live in a society where six six out of the last seven presidential elections, the American people have not voted for the right wing. But the right wing, who have not reflected the majority of the American voice, are great at consolidating power. And so we're not about the table anymore. It's, it's not, okay, this President Clinton is the most popular president of our lifetimes. What can we do to regroup? What self-introspection might we do? How might we better reach the hearts and minds of Americans so that they may freely vote on it? No. Entrapment so that we can impeach him and push out the result of two fair elections. And while we're able to consolidate power, okay, the right wing will gerrymander so that in congressional districts, even if there are more Democrats that vote, the right wing gets more seats in Congress. While that's happening, the left wing, they're terrible at, 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 at holding on to power. And instead, are increasingly domineering through the strength of their indignation, which may be valid. If you if you have indignation because of an injustice done to some way, George Floyd, that's right. That's right. But indignation, obviously, does not determine the intrinsic truth of a matter. And Fox News is the outlet that started the ascent of indignation and feelings determining your sense of intrinsic truth. And if you live in a society that going on two decades now, okay, lives on indignation, then both sides are no longer going to have relationship to something called the truth. If you were a teenager before 9-11, okay, you grew up in a world where you were cognizant of your grandparents having sacrificed either in serving, either in dying, or or serving at home in World War II, in which they literally saved half the world. That was a world where people were cognizant of an undetermined outcome and prevailed. 
creating a, a different world order of more sustained peace and prosperity ever in history. Okay? Led by America and America's allies. In the decade that followed World War II, if you were an immigrant, you likely were European and you had first-hand sensory memories of when you didn't know if you were going to make it because of the circumstances of World War II. Or even after World War II, if you lived under communism, you, you, you know that you got out and had opportunity here and are living in a much more stable world order of peace and prosperity than before. Your children then in America were cognizant of their parents' sacrifices and triumphs and benefited without having to sacrifice that much uh, other than, than having to be drafted to Vietnam. Bullshit war. But they had enough bandwidth to protest said war. They had enough bandwidth to protest and bring down through the mechanisms of a free press and free speech, a president that did not believe in the constitution, allowing for a more just society. Their children, my generation though, yes, we were cognizant of it. We lived with the people that did those things, our grandparents and our parents, but we now did not have to make any sacrifice whatsoever. Okay, you're already talking now about degrees removed from the reality of sacrifice, the reality of if you want freedom, you got to do something about it. Degrees removed from a cognizance of history and what is going on now in the world. My generation. Okay. So that if you came of age after 9-11 though, I imagine you don't know anything about any of that. Because you grew up in an America post 9-11 that largely has failed to successfully face its challenges.
You don't you don't know of an America that was fighting a just war. You don't know an America that allowed anyone with a full time job to buy a house. What you grew up with is the proliferation of not just capitalism. Capitalism, if if you if you're a left winger in America who believes in communism and the fall of capitalism, what that means is you did not grow up in communism, most likely. Okay. Capitalism should be about fair competition. It should be about the, 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 the citizen, the consumer benefiting some way. If you want something of the highest quality, you got to pay more. If not, you have the choice to buy something of a little less quality, you pay less. But we have an ultra consumerism where it's not about competition. It's about Amazon and Apple, who, yes, of course I use, squeezing out the competition even being able to sell things, certain products at a loss, if it squeezes out the competition. So that now you have, you have startups in Silicon Valley, let's say, whose goal is not to compete against these companies, but to be bought out by those companies. That is not healthy capitalism. But that is all fueled by our insistence on more. Mm-hmm. More. When you combine that with the, the, the tendency of the modern American to never be satisfied with the products they already have, to never be satisfied with their physiological needs being on point, Combine that with the media, where now you're looking at something that allegedly is news, and it really is just the free speech of people expressing their emotional indignation at moder moderation, which was the politics of Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, and, and George H.W. Bush, H.W., okay? And I, and I don't care for him. It's the, and now it's in your pocket in a computer that you walk around with and you're being inundated constantly with extremely brief, extremely shallow, but majorly proliferated amounts of information nonstop. And the question is, do you have the capacity, the experience, the temperament to take the time to process things. I was at Ground Zero on 9-11. I'm a New Yorker on 9-11. I'm an American on 9-11. How much of an effort, how much of an altruistic value system that I have to have to watch Colin Powell's argument before the UN to legitimize the Iraq war? It took about as much altruism and effort as for me to do what I'm doing right now, sitting on a couch, watching television. Other than journalists or scholars, I am the only person I've ever met that has watched his big PowerPoint to the UN to justify the Iraq war. And when I watched it, I said, that's it. We just don't have that temperament anymore. And Fox News is the outlet that started the ascent of indignation and feelings determining your sense of intrinsic truth. Let me get a little brave, okay? And hopefully rhetorically, let me ask you, at what point after what I'm about to say, are you going to become intolerant of my mature, adult, tolerant conversation? Men have an X and a Y chromosome. If you have an X and a Y chromosome, you're not a woman. 
why is that statement controversial? I personally believe in trans rights. They should have all the rights as everybody else, full stop. But my observation, as someone who's not a scientist either, as someone who is tolerant, empathetic, making a perfectly normal observation and all ears as to what you might have to say, be it science, your own personal experience, or your own verbal explorations of your own questioning or your own thoughts. Have I said anything that should necessarily make you intolerant of me? If you live in a society that going on two decades now, okay, lives on indignation, then both sides are no longer going to have relationship to something called the truth. When Martin Luther King was protesting for decades, in your own Declaration of Independence it says we're all equal, and yet I can't go and get a milkshake because of the color of my skin. I can't marry this person I'm in love with because of the color of my skin. Simple as that. And that why it was of such an intrinsic righteousness that obviously on the face of it could not be denied. And we don't live in a society anymore that is based on truth and people are simply not as interested in the truth of the matter, the truth of history, the truths of what, of the complexities of modern life as they are in consumption.